Hey everyone, welcome back to another flipped lesson. And in this lesson, we're going to be going more in depth uh, from our introduction for two types of tissues, and that'll be epithelial and nervous tissue. So just as we go through, make sure you uh, get everything written down, any key terms and objectives, and if you miss any at the end, go back and look for them. All right, so really today uh, we're going to be going over these two types of tissues. And just a reminder, right, these are your, your four types, epithelial, connective muscle, and nervous. Um, epithelial and connective have a lot that go with them, a lot of different parts and components that make them up. So we're going to do those two in two separate videos. So in this video, we'll be talking about epithelial and nervous, mostly epithelial tissue though. All right. And just some review from our introduction. What is epithelial tissue? Well, it's tissue that covers your entire body surface, both on the inside and the out. And it also makes up your glands, right? When we talk about glands that secrete, uh, hormones and other chemicals, and they attach underlying connective tissues of what we call the basement membrane. So in this little diagram here, we see we have epithelial tissue up top here, which would make up like your skin. All right. And below it, this green would be connective tissue, which then would go down to your um, like muscle tissue below that and connects it. But in between, we have this basement membrane. All right. So it's uh, kind of think about the layer between the connective tissue and our epithelial tissue. All right, and you can see, right, well, not, you can't see it here, but think about when we're dissecting our cats and we are skinning them, right? We talk about that fascia, that connective tissue that's going to be in here, uh, just below that basement membrane. All right, so again, just some other uh, reminders here for epithelial tissue. There's, there's no vascularization, right? There's no blood supply that comes to that upper epithelial tissue. So if you think about it, like if you ever got a paper cut on your skin, it may not bleed because it didn't get down to that connective tissue level. These cells reproduce rapidly, which uh, results in rapid healing and scarring, okay? Which is why if you, if you again, if you cut yourself, uh, that will heal in a, few, a matter of days, right? Uh, if not quicker. And cells are really tightly packed together. And we'll, we'll talk about, as we go through the functions of the different types of these, it makes sense, right? Our skin is a protective barrier that keeps things from coming coming in or going out, um, as well as the other epithelial tissue inside. So they're, they're really packed tightly together so that you can't leak, all right? And uh, it's just important to remember, like, your skin is your largest organ in your body. And it's about 15 16% of your body weight, uh, which is crazy, all right? And because your skin grows so rapidly, epithelial tissue grows so rapidly, and it's always being replaced, it takes about 27 days uh, for that outer layer of skin to be shed and replaced. And you get, need to think about, like, where does all that dead skin go? Well, constantly, um, right, that outermost layer of epithelial tissue on our skin is peeling off, all right? And not just, like, when you get a sunburn and your skin peels. Every day. Um, I, actually, I think I read a statistics that every hour I think you shed about 30,000 skin cells. So where does that stuff go? Well, it goes all around us here, right? Uh, your skin cells end up on the floor and on the and on the TV stand and on the couch and in your food, right? As dust that's flying around, a lot of dust that flies around is actually made up of old skin cells. And you can see things like this. This is a dust mite, right? Little tiny microscopic uh, things that eat, they go around and eat the dust. But you got to remember that dust is actually um, organic material, right? It's coming off of us. It is edible, I guess, for some creatures. They can get energy from it. So huh, think about how much skin you lose on a daily basis. And that's without getting cut or sunburned or peeling or things like that. All right. So get into the good stuff here. So functions of epithelial tissue, right? We need to look at these here. And we know that epithelial obviously is for protection. It works with secretion. We can absorb stuff through it. So not just absorbing through our skin, but remember we said epithelial lies on the inside of us. So when we eat food and we're getting the nutrients from that, right, that's going to be absorbed through epithelial tissue in our small intestine. All right, excretion and our senses too. And you'll see there's six major types here. We're going to go through these. But the key thing here, and this is the biggest thing to take away from this learning of epithelial tissue more in depth, is that we categorize these uh, the types of epithelial tissue based on the shape and on the layers of the cells. So shape and layers. And you can see looking at these here, some of them look kind of like square-ish or like cubes. And some of them look really tall, like pillars or columns, right? And you also see we have some that are one-layered and you have some that are multi-layered. So if you think about it, we can kind of categorize these based on the shape and the layers. All right. Oops, wrong way. 
So uh, what are our different types? So we have, again, when we talk about the layers, we can either have simple, which is a single layer, or we have stratified, which is multiple layers. So again, that single layer of epithelial tissue would be simple. If you see more than one layer on top of each other, it's stratified. And then we have some different shapes. So squamous would be flat. I love that word squamous, right? Think about it like a, a squashed, like if something's squashed, it's flat like a pancake, that's squamous, all right? Then we have cuboidal, so in the shape of a cube or a square. And then we have columnar, which is like a column, like we said, a pillar, uh, a rectangle, all right? And one type of tissue can be arranged in different forms and each form has a different function. So again, looking at all these different shapes uh, and layers, right? The different epithelial tissue in your body is gonna be based on these shapes and layers for whatever job it has to accomplish. All right, so that's, uh, that's how we do the basic naming of the layers and the shapes. Now let's go through some of these different layer uh, types of epithelial tissue and what they do. So the first one is simple squamous, right? So simple means one layer, squamous means flat, like squashed. Um, and, and this makes up like our basement membrane, right? All epithelial tissue has that basement membrane. It's a Single, this is what you want to see right down here if you want to write it down, right? It's a single layer, flat and thin cells, and the function is for diffusion and filtration. Because it's only that one tiny layer, um, this is where we'll see a lot of uh, things being able to pass through those cells. So a great example is in, your, in the lungs, right? You have those little air sacs, alveoli, uh, and you have capillaries that run next to them, and, and those simple squamous cells in your lungs or what allow oxygen to pass through and go into your bloodstream and carbon dioxide to come through the other way and get exhaled out. All right, so simple squamous, uh, that's, the, that's the function and the form, right? Single, flat, and thin. So that's what we wanna know for each of these. What do they look like? What is their structure and what's their function? All right, so our next one here, simple cuboidal. Again, we could see one, and there's a couple of really nice, this is a, a slide of actual ones. There's some cartoon representations, but Simple, one layer, all right, and cuboidal, that square or cubed shape. And these help with secretion and absorption, all right? And they would be found in things like uh, your kidneys, right, the tubes going into your kidneys, uh, ducts and coverings to the ovaries. So organs where they're going to be doing some secretion or absorption. So like your kidneys are going to absorb uh, salts and nitrates and other chemicals out of your bloodstream. That's what these simple cuboidal cells are there to make up. And again, you can see it's not huge amounts of layers that stratified simple means it's pretty easy for stuff to get through there. All right, next we have simple columnar. So again, simple means one layer and columnar is that column or rectangular or pillar shaped cell. And again, functions here would be secretion and absorption. So these are found in digestive tract right? They have these things called goblet cells, which secrete a mucus, okay? Um, and those goblet cells are going to create mucus, like in our stomach, right? We have a mucus membrane to protect us from our acid, all right? They also can have microvilli to increase surface area. Um, we'll talk way more about this when we get into the digestive system, but microvilli are like little tiny microscopic fingers, right? Which have little bumps that increase the surface area. That's all I need to know for microvilli right now. But that's our simple columnar. All right, I love this picture here. The goblet cell that makes a mucus here. All right, we have cytoplasm of the regular columnar cells. These are the nuclei and that basement membrane before we get to the connective tissue. All right, so now we're getting into our stratified squamous. So again, stratified means many levels and squamous is flat, right? And we can see here, this picture has many, 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 many levels of those flat squamous cells. Uh, they're multi-layered, they, and this is a, they play a big role in protection is their function. And these are what line the body cavity. So our skin, our mouth going down into our digestive tract uh, are filled with these stratified squamous cells. If you remember in biology, um, we do a microscope lab where we, we scrape our inside of our mouth with a toothpick and we dye those cells, look at them. Well, those are stratified squamous cells, right? And you think about it, why does your mouth have these layers and layers and layers of, of flat squamous cells? Well, to protect us from all that chewing and things poking around our mouth and same thing on our skin, right? We don't, we want a lot of layers to protect ourselves. So the 
we know what the structure is and we know what the function is, right? Things like skin and mouth. All right, so we're talking a lot about this basement membrane and kind of the going down to connective tissue. So I just wanna talk a second here to think about, all right, well, like if you've ever seen somebody with a tattoo, right? And like, here's our skin. So if you've ever seen somebody with a tattoo, like do they only tattoo and put ink in these upper layers right here? Well, actually no, right? Cause we said, and we, at the beginning of the video, we said our cells are always reproducing and we're losing skin cells. So to actually have a tattoo that's gonna last, we need to get down to that basement layer here so that all those new cells that keep coming up actually get that ink. And that's why tattoos fade over time because they're losing more and more ink as those cells reproduce. But if you're only to do it on the top layer, right, not the basement membrane, that too, a tattoo wouldn't stick, all right? Something else to think about here is, and I know we talked about this in our intro video, would be like when we talk about wrinkles, right, um, as you get older. So wrinkles don't actually have to do with the skin, right, or, or our stratified squamous cells that are outside up here. Right, they actually have to do with the connective tissue. So we'll talk more about wrinkles in our next video. But I just like to talk about it here is that wrinkles aren't actually your skin. It's your connective tissue. And you can see it has to do with the, if you remember from our other video, the collagen and elastin proteins that are in that connective tissue. So here's the basement membrane up here below the stratified squamous. And then we have all this connective tissue. And you can see over time, right, the col these collagen fibers actually get weaker and smaller. And that causes the skin to wrinkle. All right. So again, wrinkled skin is not actually from our epithelial tissue. It's because of our connective tissue. All right. So our next type of uh, uh, epithelial tissue would be pseudostratified columnar. Now, if you hear that word pseudo, it means fake, right? So it appears stratified, uh, but it's actually just one single layer of cells and the nuclei are at all different levels. Okay. And you can see like this is a great picture right here. It's kind of tough to see on the real one, but this is a great representation where if you actually look at each cell, there's only one level, but this one's wider down here. This one's wider up here, narrow here. Same thing, right? That there actually is only one level. They're just all misshapen, but it looks multi-level. That's why it's pseudo stratified columnar. All right. And these have, they can have cilia, which are like little hair like projections. If you remember in biology, we talked about cilia. All right, and their function is secretion and cilia-aided movement. So, right, when you're actually breathing, these might make up, help, like, with your trachea, and they actually push stuff uh, up and down the airway to help keep it clean. All right, they line the air passages and two, oops, excuse me. Uh, they line those air passages, right? Those cilia help move stuff up and down. They line the tubes of the reproductive system. So that's pseudostratified columnar. Then we have transitional epithelium, Okay. Uh, and you get this, this is a little bit different than the other ones, all right? But basically, they, they form really tight junctions and think about it like waterproof or liquid proof, right? They block diffusion, which is what, right, mo moving from high to low concentration. So they keep water from moving in and out, and they're actually really stretchable, all right? And the key thing here for transitional epithelium is it's found in something like the urinary bladder, all right? And hopefully you remember, you know what your bladder is, right? It's like the little sac that holds urine uh, before we dispel it through urination, right? That, that toxic waste there. So we don't really want urine leaking out of our bladder to go into our body. And we don't want excess water that we need to go into our bladder um, unless it's coming filtered from the kidney. So you can see this picture down here is like what the bladder looks like. And you have these transitional epithelium cells that form that really tight junction so we could fill it up with urine and then release it when it's time. All right. And then we have glandular epithelium. So at the beginning of the video, we said epithelial cells are also, or tissue, also make up our glands, right? And these are specialized epithelial cells that secrete substances and they make up our glands. And we'll talk about this later in the year, but we have two types of glands, exocrine and endocrine. And some of the things we... we uh, uh, expel for each of these would be like saliva and sweat. And then we also se secrete hormones, right? So these all come from different types of epithelial cells, those glandular cells. And you hear the word gland in there. Okay, cool. And then I just threw these in here just so you can look. If you want to take a screenshot of each and save it, but uh, just some more examples and like some more detailed pictures, right? So that simple squamous, um, Right, one layer where they you might find them in your lungs. You can see one layer here, pseudostratified 
columnar, right, with the cilia reaching up here would be in our trachea. We can move that right over here, go down to our lungs, helping to move stuff. Let's see, we have simple columnar, which is going to be for absorption, like in our small intestine. We have simple cuboidal, like in our kidneys here, and you can see how they make these nice rings here to absorb molecules. And then stratified squamous, so many layered squamous, right? Nose, mouth, um, and basically the openings of our bodies, right? Lots of protection, lots of cells here. Cool. And now, so here is, uh, I want you guys to actually take a screenshot here. And uh, I'll move my camera out of the way. So take a screenshot, and I want you to label. So we see these different types here, and these are your choices, right? I want you to, to label each one. So is this... Uh, stratified cuboidal up here is a simple squamous. So label each one of the words here. When we go, when we get into class, we'll go over these and see how you did. Okay, so take a screenshot if you haven't already, and then go and label those. Nice. All right, so I'm going to pause there for a sec. So that's all of our epithelial tissue, a little bit more in depth uh, from our intro video. So definitely we need to know the types, we need to know their structure or their shape, and we need to know the function of each. And Kind of with that function is some of those examples, right? But uh, so real quick, and we don't have much to do. So nervous tissue, while it's really complex and the way it works is really, uh, it can be very complicated and there's a lot that goes into it, which we'll talk about more when we get to our nervous system. But in terms of the tissue, it's pretty straightforward, all right? We have two types of cells that make up that nervous tissue. So the first one would be our neurons, right? And these are the ones that actually send the signals. There's two really important parts here. We have dendrites and we have the axon, okay? So the axon is that really long, thin part that's actually covered in fat. And that, the axon is what sends the signal uh, to the next neuron that it connects to. And it, it goes so fast because of that myelin sheath and the fat that allows it to send the signal. So the axon is that long, thin part that sends it. And then every neuron you obviously has a, it's a, eukaryotic cells. So we see the nucleus here, and this is the cell body, right? But it has these little spider web things called dendrites, all right? And this is what receives a signal from another neuron. And you can see here at the end of the axon that would connect to the dendrites of the next nerve cell or neuron, all right? So the neurons are what transmit the signals. But then you have these really cool uh, supporting cells called the neuroglia, all right? And you can see they're, they're not like neurons that have a long axon to send a signal. They're kind of around it and just supporting it uh, in terms of that nervous tissue receiving and transmitting and processing these signals. So those are our two types of cells that make up nervous tissue and kind of their jobs. And again, neurons can, can vary in shape and size, all right? You can have some neurons that are super, super long, like feet long in a, in a giraffe, right? And you can have really, really tiny ones uh, as well. So they really are diverse. And Here's just a picture from spinal cord, a cross section here, where you can see some of these, you can see the neuroglia, right? The dots in here, the supporting cells. And you can see some of these long neurons, those long axons. And this is where the dendrites would be over here, but the cell body, same thing, long axon, cell body, dendrites, okay? So that is the end of this flipped lesson where we talked about epithelial tissue and nervous tissue. So make sure you go back, make sure you have everything filled in on your notes. Make sure you did that screenshot where um, I wanted you to just label those different types there. Good practice. We'll go over that. And then our next flipped lesson, we'll talk about muscle tissue as well as connective tissue, two really important things. So um, let me know if you have any questions. Shoot me an email or, or a tweet. And uh, hey, hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.